Joining us now, E.J. Dion, opinion writer for The Washington Post and an MSNBC political analyst. He's the co-author of the new book, One Nation After Trump. Also with us, Daniel Dale, Washington correspondent for the Toronto Star. And here in New York, Nick Ackerman, former federal prosecutor and former assistant special Watergate, Watergate prosecutor. He's an MSNBC contributor. Uh, Nick, so there's the president saying, I'm not under investigation, and of course, believe me. But I see his campaign chairman indicted. I see a mid-level uh, staffer uh, who's there in pictures with Donald Trump uh, indicted and self-convicted with a guilty plea. Is it conceivable that the special prosecutor is doing all of this and just not looking across that line to Donald Trump? Oh, I think it's inconceivable. I think this whole thing is heading directly towards Donald Trump. I mean, you've got two shots over the bow here. One, you've got the campaign manager, and everything about that indictment screams out Russia, connection to Russia, connection to all of the various people around Putin. And then you've got Papadopoulos, who is all part of this collusion. It fits right mm -hmm. in with what happened on June 9th at the Trump Tower meeting. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is how a normal investigation starts. Papadopoulos is not going to be the first person to come in and sing like a canary. You're going to see a whole series of other people, people's names that are not household names, names that we don't recognize, that are going to be coming forward in the course of this, people who are going to be indicted additionally to the first one with Manafort and his sidekick, you're going to see a whole series of these indictments and a whole series of other people throwing in the towel and telling the truth as to what happened. And EJ, we are seeing stories change along the way over the weeks and the months. Carter Page's story kind of changed dramatically tonight in this, this new report. Uh, but the president lashing out and lashing out at the Justice Department, uh, that usually, if we follow his pattern of lashing out in the past, that usually means there's something he's worried about. Right. I think there are two scientific rules in this uh, inquiry. Scientific rule one is what you just said. Whenever he's attacking the Justice Department, he's in a lot of trouble. And scientific rule two is you can determine the depth of that trouble by how often he says the words Hillary Clinton. And we have had a cascade of attacks on Hillary Clinton over the last week. And it is a classic Trump technique, which is he doesn't really know how to win on his own. He wins. He could only win by attacking some adversary. He can live without friends, uh, but not without enemies. And I agree uh, that the, this investigation is moving in a way that's very dangerous, because Robert Mueller is running this like a mob investigation, uh, which is appropriate where money and power are concerned. And he is really looking into uh, the money involved um, in the Trump empire. Uh, and that's, I think, what Trump is most afraid of. And I think that's where this, uh, in part of where this investigation is going to end up. Let's look at the president uh, this morning when he was asked about his memory of that meeting with George Papadopoulos. Mr. President, do you remember George Papadopoulos during that March meeting? I, the I don't idea remember of a much about that meeting. It was a very unimportant meeting, took place a long time. Don't remember much about it. Uh, Daniel Dale, uh, he's in a bit of a bind there, having claimed to have a perfect memory, and that's why his version of the phone call, the condolence phone call uh, to Sergeant LaDavid Johnson's widow is accurate, and the widow's version of it is inaccurate. Uh, but when he needed that memory uh, today on the Papadopoulos meeting, he doesn't have it. But he knows he's in a photograph with Papadopoulos in that meeting, so he couldn't completely deny knowledge of it. He couldn't. I think we've learned over the past couple of years that Donald Trump will say whatever he needs to say to get out of a jam in that given moment, no matter what he has said 10 minutes prior or a day prior or what he will say 10 minutes in the future. We had this amazing moment in his, uh, his latest interview on, on Fox yesterday where he, he decried the false reporting that he's been angry about things. That was his quote. I, it's false that I've been angry about things. Literally under 10 seconds later, he said, I have a certain anger about the media. 
And so he doesn't, you know, he, he's, he lives his life and he makes public statements uh, in a way that does not suggest he has given them a lot of thought. And I think, you know, we can, we can think of him as a, a strategist when he attacks the Justice Department, for example, think that he's playing some sort of chess trying to discredit this institution that challenges him. But I think he's often acting on pure impulse. He's scrambling without thinking of, of uh, what the impact will be on him in the days and weeks to come. Nick Ackerman, we have a report tonight from Washington Post that Keith Schiller is going to speak to House Intelligence Committee investigators. He is a longtime uh, Trump bodyguard who predates the campaign by many, many years. They intend to ask him about some of the allegations in the Russian dossier, which means they intend to ask him about Donald Trump's personal behavior in Moscow in 2013. Uh, and it seems that that would be territory that the special prosecutor would want to go over with Keith Schiller also. And Keith Schiller knows more about what Donald Trump has done in his personal life in the last 15 years or so than anyone alive, including probably anyone who's ever been married to Donald Trump. I, I totally agree. And this is, again, the, the same analogy that was brought up about the mob investigation. I mean, if I were looking to find out what the boss was doing, who the boss was sleeping with, where the boss was... I'd go for his chauffeur. I'd go for his bodyguard. That's exactly and, and what they're federal doing. Federal prosecutors have turned guys like that, specifically in mob cases. Like I used that. to do it all the time. Yeah. I had a whole series of people like that in the witness yeah. protection program. Yeah. I mean, you go for the people that know the most, that are closely aligned with the person, with them every day, joke with the person, they talk about all kinds of things, and those are the people that really know what's going on. Now, whether or not he's going to tell the truth, that's a whole different story. We've got to fit a break in here. Nick Ackerman, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.